You couldn't drag me to join there for all the jewels in India. That whole house looks like it's ready to fall down and all it is condemned and full of rats. You're probably gonna crash through a hole in the floor and get eaten by rats in the basement. Oh, I really wish you wouldn't go in there. There's no way I'm going to let Margaret find whatever she thinks is hidden in there before I do. And it doesn't look like she's anywhere around yet, so I think we're going to beat her to it. Don't you dare say we! This is absolutely your funeral! Oh wait, I meant investigation. You and Margaret can compete for the best detective in the world all you want. We'll just read about whatever trouble you guys get into in the morning newspaper. Yeah, count Dad for that. Okay, be sure to cover for me until I get home. Greetings, Traveler. Have you come in search for the treasure? Yes. There is treasure, but the path is riddled with danger. And when your partner will need to work together to avoid many perils. If you will succeed, you will be rewarded beyond your wildest dreams. Maggie? Well, well, what are you doing here? What do you think? The same thing you're doing. We'll just remember who got here first. Oh yeah, thanks for the soft landing. Okay, first mystery solved. Turning on the lights. Wait, you don't know. Hey, what? Here we go. This is the door that gets us out of here. So that's Margaret too. Well, well, nothing. Jeez, don't be such a... Maggie 3, bravo, very good work. You know, if there's a keyhole just under the knob, if it's locked, we'll need to find the key. Once we figure out how to reach it, what's your plan, genius? It's so obvious, one of us stands on the other's back. Okay, so who's the letter? Gee, so you, of course. You put us into this mess. I did the only obvious thing there was to do, Luther, so don't bother me. Yeah, Maggie, and now the obvious thing is get down on your hands and knees so I can get high enough to turn the doorknob. We're both the same height, Maggie. It doesn't matter who reaches for it. I'll 
thank you for it. Forget flipping. You gotta help me fix it. You broke. Pull it. Heads, you menace. The way it's supposed to be. Now be a good coffee table, would ya? Take of your shoes, you bum young animal. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, come on, let's get this thing over with. Get fast, you water buffalo. Okay, the knob's just turning in place, so we've got to find the key. Probably somewhere in here. Ooh, good guess. Maggie's got four points now. I hope that clock is not right. It isn't, and it isn't making any clock noise either. It's going to be 7 o'clock in this room forever. Alright then, we're looking for a skeleton key that's somewhere in this room. I say we start looking inside the desk. Yeah, birds, I bet it's underneath the roll top. Easy stuff. Maybe not so easy. My money's on it being locked. No, wait! We gotta start by writing those numbers down first. Why, pretty obvious they are not the right combination. But that number might mean something, you know? Maybe a clue or something. We don't want to start out by messing up what's right here in front of our eyes. Pretty smart. So where do we get the pencil and paper? There might be some in the desk, but that's not going to help right now. Ta-da! Every detective has to have one of these. Okay, we got eight, two, nine, which of course doesn't work. If this turns out to be some kind of clue, now we have it. one on the scoreboard, the crowd goes wild, so where are the clues? If this is some kind of puzzle, then the right combination has to be here somewhere. Not a whole lot of places to find clues. Hey, what about the carpet? Oh, smart one. We could be here all night trying to figure out what's in these patterns. No kidding. 12 by 12. That's like 144 square feet. Hey, wait. Look at this. Do you see this little tab? Do you see what's written on it? Feast of walls. Okay, so if this is really a clue, then it means the real clues are on the walls. Okay, but what kind of numbers are going to be on two presidents? It's not the numbers on the presidents, it's the presidents on the numbers. Money! Presidents are on money! Exactly, wizard. Okay, so what kind of money are we talking about? We got Lincoln and Washington, a penny and a quarter? Or a dollar bill and a five dollar bill? I've seen a lot more coins than paper. Um, yeah, is it one and twenty-five, or one and five? Well, if it's coins, then we have twenty-six cents, so maybe one, two, and five? And dollars would be one and five, so that's six, or it might be fifteen. I'd put Washington before Lincoln if it's about dates. For me, I'm thinking one, two, five, because Lincoln is one cent and Washington is twenty-five times that. 
Well, Cheats, we need four members, so there has to be something else to it. Seven o'clock. What about the clock doors? There's some way we didn't look. Well, of course, nothing written anywhere. How about on the pendulum disc? Try unscrewing it. That's how my grandpa changes how fast it goes side to side. One direction is slower and the other is faster. Uh, okay, how about like this? Not that way, Toby. Turn it like a water faucet. Light around in one direction for a while. Oh yeah, Lefty Lucy. I knew that. A whole lot of nothing. Then all we got is the door to open, I guess. And my guess is we already have the combination. One, two, five, and seven for a penny, a quarter, and a clock face seven. Anyway, it's the only way we can get four numbers looking at the walls. Okay, the first is one, now two, and five, and seven. Gee, so how many number combinations are we gonna need? There's gotta be a trick. There's something else we gotta do with these numbers. President's paper money, we only get three numbers, so if we write about it being coins, then there's something else we need to figure out. But what is it? Eight, two, eight, nine, okay, but what? Subtraction. Let's try subtracting our wall numbers from this number. Thousand. 289 minus 1257. Up, uh, yeah, that's 7032. So 7, 0, 3, and 2. Let's hope we only have to subtract the smaller number from the larger. I don't want to have to deal with the negative numbers. Well, at least we'll have two chances to get this right for all the marbles. I hate math. One's locked. What about the others? Oh, hey, sounds like a metal something. Bingo, Ringo. Time is of the essence. Open it. Well, another puzzle. All the other drawers empty, so now what? If I don't get home in an hour, there will be trouble in River City. You know, Toby, I think it's gonna rain in River City. Going uphill. Duh, I wonder how far we climbed. Don't know, I kinda lost track. We haven't seen any windows yet, so we may as well be underground. Was was there a voice that talked to you before you fell? Sure was. It asked if I was up to treasure, and then said there would be plenty of danger ahead. The floor dropped out, and next thing I knew, you landed on top of me. Mine said the same thing. It also said something about working with my partner, but Terry went home, so I don't know what it meant. Yeah, mine said pretty much the same thing, but I've never had a partner before. You don't suppose it meant us? Me? Partners with you? What do you mean? Back there we had to 
work together to get out of that room. Doesn't that make us partners? And so far, there's only been one way to go. It's not like we can split up. I see what you mean. I guess we partners for now. Who would have thought it? Wait a minute, it might be another trap. Doesn't look like a regular royal tour to me. Well, let's at least check, okay? I'm not finding any secret panels or anything. Told you so. Now can we go in? After you. Well, it's not like we wanted to go back that way anyway, so I go left and you go right. Are you sure it's okay to split up? Nine, seven, one, two, four. What did you find? Another door, with another one of those combination lock things. How about you? There's another painting with numbers on it. Well, what's the number? There's another painting with numbers on it. After that last room, this will be a cinch. Come on, let's get out of here. Just checking for secret passages. Fine, just get a move on, will you? You're the one who had to be home at a certain time. Huh? What happened? It shocked me. Are you okay? Yeah, but what gifts? You told me that was the right code. Maybe... Maybe it just short-circuited or something and the door's unlocked. I'm not touching it again. You try. Nope, it's still locked. Are you sure that was the right code? Yeah, I'm sure. I guess we'll just have to see. Seven, nine, one, four, two? You messed up the code. But, but, but I'm sure it read 97124 before. Then how do you explain that? Maybe it changed? Toby, it's a painting. How could it possibly change? Don't know, but it must have. Well, we've got the right code now. Let's go. Maybe... maybe we should check the painting again. What good would that do? 
The only things in this room are the painting and the door. We know there aren't any secret passages, so do you have any other ideas? Maybe, maybe it's the same numbers in a different order. Let's go look at the painting again. One seven nine. Still think I messed up the code before. I I guess not. But how is it changing? With some of the stuff that's been going around here lately, this isn't all that strange. Okay. So how do we get out of here? One of us is gonna have to stand here and watch the painting in case the code changes again, while the other unlocks the door. Okay, do you mind doing the door? I've already been shocked twice. Sure, just keep a close eye on the painting. Margaret, has the combination changed? No, it hasn't. The door's open, come on! Hey, Valwa, wait for me. Any bet on what this is going to be? How about an empty room with a door at the end? I still play with Doris, but this looks like the saddest version I've ever seen. I don't see any way out of here except through those windows up there. I think they may or may not have handles to open them up, just like at the auditorium at school. So it looks like we have to figure out how to get up there before we can escape. But it's too far away from the ladder to just climb up and reach the handle. Okay, so what's the rope all about? We can't even reach it. We can if we can just run up the slide and grab it. But I don't see any reason to. We can't use the rope to reach the windows. There. The rope is attached to a key that's coming out of the ceiling, kind of like it's missing a lock. No kidding. I can't see anything up there. The angle is too steep. Yeah, you have to see the little reflection from the light to figure out what it is. So maybe, the only thing to do is go get the coil of rope and pull the key down. Well, but maybe the key is supposed to open something where it is right now, so pulling it down won't help. Yeah, okay maybe, but if the key is missing its lock, where are we gonna find it? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, what if we could grab the rope and twist it? Then all we would have to do is climb up the ladder, grab it, and start twisting. I don't know. Do you think the ladders are close enough to grab the rope? They both look just a little too far. So let's find out. Now, it doesn't look like we can. 
Bad cheeks. Hey, what about this? back up to the ceiling on its own. Yeah, okay. Okay, what if, what if there was a way to use the rope to lean out from the top of the ladder far enough to reach the lock? I don't know, that kinda looks just a little too far to reach, you know? Yeah, the problem isn't the distance. But I can see that if you go leaning out from the ladder like that, you'll end up too far below the ceiling to reach it. Kind of like as the crow's flies isn't going to help. We're going to need to get to the top of the ladder, then lean out to put the key in the lock. But we got to be right underneath the lock to be close enough. Hey, I got it! Okay, got what? This better be good, you know. Yippers! That's long enough to try a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch? Like, for instance? Yeah, okay, maybe like, like a trapeze. Huh? What? Yeah, like what if we tied the ends of a rope to the ladders? Kind of like making a tightrope or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like sort of making a swing between the ladders, so you can be at the top without sliding. But, can you still reach that log? Well, maybe if you could lean far enough away from the slide, that might let you lean out far enough to get the key into the lock. But it's a pretty long lean. Hey, how about this? What if you tied one end of the rope to one ladder, then pulled the entire rest of the rope around the second ladder? That way you could end up with enough spare rope to hold onto so you could lean way out and reach the lock. Well, I guess as long as it was tied to each ladder with really good knots, it might kind of work. Sort of how mountain climbers repel themselves down cliffs, but we'll just be leaning back. Yes, that's it. Let's both take an end, then climb up the ladders, okay? Okay. I'll take the right side next to the windows. <laughs> you know, this rope's kinda heavy. Yeah, and getting heavier the higher we get, maybe we won't be able to lift it all the way up. Here we are. We gotta talk about which step we're gonna tie the ends on. Top step. I don't know if there's enough room to stand up on the tightrope. Yeah, I think we gotta go down a couple of steps before we start tying the ends. 
And maybe if we don't try to make it a tightrope anyway, how about just more of a kind of bridge between the letters? I think that'll work a lot easier, so I'm going to tie my end of the rope right about where I'm standing once I climb down a little. Okay, but wait. First we have to decide who's going to walk across the rope. Um... Well, I guess since you ran up the slide and grabbed the rope, that means it's my turn to do something now. I think you're right. Yeah, right. Can you rely on that? Gonna have to, I guess. Okay, hold on. I think this should be about right. Ready for the circus? Uh, well, sure. There's no way I'm gonna keep my balance on this rope. We need to figure out another way to do this. That's kind of what I thought, but I think I've got the answer. Stretch the rest of the ceiling rope across the steps of both ladders, then you'll have something to hold onto. Okay, I'm going to pull it through the top and tie it off. That should stay tight enough to hold me up. Looks kinda out of reach. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to lean back to reach it with a key. Jeez, this is do or die time. Yes, you got it. Now we get a real ladder. Looks like there's something up there, like some kind of attic. Well, I guess that's our next room. After you. make money off of something like this. Set up a house with rooms like these and charge people to go through them. You think people would pay for this? Toby, you must have hit your head really hard. The trap door didn't hit me that hard. I meant when you fell down the stairs. What do you know about that? You weren't the one who threw the blanket, were you? I, I didn't know who you were. I thought you might have been an intruder. I'll deal with you later. Jeeves, I don't even know where to start with this one. And what about these switches? It doesn't say anything about that. Each switch either always tells the truth or always lies. Number four is a liar. Huh? How do you figure? The second statement, he says that he's a liar. That can't be true, can it? Yes, but if he's lying about being a lie, doesn't that mean he's telling the truth? Maybe if he was only talking about himself, but he isn't. He's saying that number six in here are the only liars. I don't know, Toby. There's only four switches. Can't we just try them all until we find the right one? It sounds hollow. There may be another trap door under here, which could open if we use the wrong switch. Well, at least we'd know how to get through the rooms this time. Yeah, if we get sent to the same place. 
Okay, so if number four is a lie, so what? That doesn't tell us anything about the other switches. Give me a sec. My Uncle Jack taught me this, to keep track of stuff. Now let's see, since number four is a liar, that means number six is telling the truth. Which means it's not the red switch. So it's not the red switch. What about the other three switches? I'm getting to those. Number three is telling the truth. So what? That didn't tell us anything about the switches. Pipe down, William. Let me think. Number five says that two odd-numbered heads tell the truth. If he is telling the truth, then number one must be a liar because we know number three tells the truth. If he's lying, then number one still can't be telling the truth because that would make number five's statement true. Either way, number one is a liar, and it's not the blue switch. Which still leaves two switches. Yes, but number two says that number one tells the truth. Since number one is a liar, number two is also a liar. And since each head only lies or only tells the truth, that means the yellow switch opens the door. Are you sure, Toby? We still don't know anything about the green switch. We don't need to know anything about the green switch. It's the yellow switch. Well, if you're so sure it's the yellow switch, then you open the door. I'll wait over here. Toby, wait. We could get the rope from the last room and tie it around your waist. That way, if it is a trap door, you won't fall very far. Thanks, Margaret. But that'll take too long. Besides... I'm sure I'm right. It's okay, Margaret. We can go in. Wonder what we'll have to do this time? Make a fool. Only a fool can open the door. Elf plus elf equals fool. Oh jeez! How are we ever gonna figure this one out? Give me your notebook and pen. Huh? Come on, hand him over. Do you think you can? and let think. Here you go. 721 plus 721 equals 1,442. Wait a sec, how'd you do that? Well, it's really just simple math. We know that F must be either 0 or 1. We do? If E is less than 5, then F is 0. If E is 5 or more, then F is 1. See? I... Uh, I, I guess so! Now, if F is 0, then F plus F is 0. But F plus F is L, and F and L can't both be 0. So F must be 1. Now, 1 and 1 are 2. So L is 2. 2 and 2 make 4. So 0 is 4. Which means E and E make 14. So E must be 7. And the combination is 1442. Toby, look, we're out. We made it. Margaret, you're right. We did it. 
Where's Don? You have successfully solved the mystery. The treasure is now yours to claim. Tasha. The true treasure of the house is friendship. After all, it's not what we have in life, but who we have in life that matters. Material, wealth, but friendship lasts forever. And friendship is the best thing you can ever have. There is nothing more on this earth than true friendship. Well, at least I got the necklace out of this. Hey, wait a second, hold it. How do you figure it's your necklace? Of course it is. I solved the last puzzle, and we both know who couldn't. Well, yeah, but I got us out of the first room, didn't I? Like, after you made the door slide up? Okay, but there was no way we would have gotten past the next door if I didn't tell you how to do it, right? You have to admit that. Maybe so, but getting that ladder down from the ceiling was completely my idea. You just ran up that slide and ended up falling back onto the floor. There's just enough time to get home if I leave right now. So you agree that I can wear the necklace, right? If you want it, then you can have it. I can always get one for myself out of a Cracker Jacks box. Now I gotta get out of here. Now. Ah, jeeps! Hey, you know, maybe something about taking the necklace is supposed to be some kind of clue. Yeah, just like everything else in this stupid place. Well, okay then. Here's a question. Don't you think it's weird that this whole awful game could have only been solved by the two of us? Well, if this was supposed to be a competition, maybe one prize would make sense. But we both had to do all of this stuff together. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that voice. It kind of sounded like Father Irwin talking about all that love and peace and hippie stuff, doesn't it? And the whole point wasn't about competition. It was about working together, no matter how much we hated each other's guts. is for neither one of us to take the locket for themselves, right? Well, if you say it that way, like the voice is supposed to be some kind of sermon, then I guess we can't get out of this house until we figure out what it means. I mean, after all the love and peace and stuff, so what are we supposed to do now? You know, what if we just left the necklace in the chest? I mean... Isn't that kind of the point of all this crazy stuff we've gone through? That neither one of us by ourselves could win this game? Yeah, so let's just put it right back into the chest. might finally prove who's the better girl detective, but I guess we didn't do that, did we? Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to do that next time. Yeah, next time. Well, see ya. Bow wow. See ya, Maggie.
What were you talking to Sister Mary about earlier today? I'm really not supposed to tell anyone else about it. Okay. But I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you, as long as you promise not to tell anyone else. Blue Jay's honor. You too, Dennis? Alright, you know the broken window in Sister Mary's classroom? Lindsay Gray threw a rock through it. Actually, Sister Mary broke it herself. She blamed Lindsay for it. Jeeps! Why would Sister Mary Angelica break her own window? She'd been complaining for weeks that her classroom was too warm, and the administration hadn't done anything about it. When she got to school this morning and the heater hadn't been fixed, she lost her temper, picked up the paperweight on her desk, and threw it through the window. I can believe that. So how did you figure it out, Derby? Right after I got to school, I saw Sister Mary talking with Sister Cabrini. I heard Sister Angelica say that someone had thrown a rock through a classroom window, and she looked up and saw Lindsay running away. The thing is, I'd just seen Lindsay a couple of minutes earlier, clear on the other side of the school. She'd have to have run really fast to get there if she'd broken the window, but she wasn't breathing hard or nothing. I waited until Sister Mary left and then told Sister Cabrini what I'd seen. She gave me a hall pass and asked me to look into it further. I wonder where you were all first period. First off, I went and looked in Sister Mary's classroom. There was a broken window, lots of pieces of glass on the floor, and in the middle of it all, a rock. Something bothered me, but I didn't figure it out until later. Then I went outside. On the ground, there were a lot of smaller pieces of glass. Way more than there should have been if the window had been broken from the outside. That's when I started getting really suspicious. Then I took a look around the area. It was all dirt and gravel, no large rocks anywhere. Lindsay would have had to pick up the rock from a long ways away. Next, I went back inside. You know how the science room is right across the hall from Sister Mary's classroom? I peeked in there, and right beside the door, there's a rock collection, and there's a big blank space right at one end. Suspicious. By then, I figured I'd seen enough, so I went back and told Sister Mary Cabrini what I'd found out. We went to Sister Mary Angelica's classroom. She kept insisting that Lindsay broke the window. Meanwhile, I kept looking at her desk, trying to figure out why it didn't look right. Finally, I figured it out. Her paperweight. You remember that statue of St. John Cantius? It's always right on her desk, but it wasn't there today. I asked her about it, but she started looking really nervous and didn't answer me. So Sister Carini demanded to see the paperweight, and finally Sister Mary took it out of a desk drawer and showed it to us. It was all scratched up, just like it had been thrown through a glass window. Imagine that! Sister Mary broke down and confessed the whole thing. Like I said, she was mad because the room was too hot. So she threw the paperweight through the window, then she ran outside, grabbed the paperweight and as many pieces of glass as she could find, went back inside, got a rock from the science room, and arranged things so it looked like someone threw the rock. She figured she could blame it on Lindsay, and no one would believe Lindsay's word over hers. Jeez.
peeps. So what'll happen to Sister Mary Angelica now? Don't know. It's up to Mother Superior. Just to clarify, she was angry because her classroom was too warm? Yes. Would that make her a hot cross nun? And then he quickly ducked out of the doorway as we threw erasers at him. Oh well, as I always say, danger is my homework.